<laughs> My name is James Bridges and I'm one of the lead bakers at Haymarket by Ashbourne Farms in Louisville, Kentucky. And today I am in uh, sunny Southern California and we are gonna make some cornbread. Now there are probably as many different ways to make cornbread as there are people that eat cornbread. <laughs> um, there's literally so many different approaches. What cornmeal you use, ratio of cornmeal to wheat flour, whether you're using butter or oil or some combination, how many eggs you use in it, how sweet is it. Um, and for this one, what I'm attempting to do is to create kind of striking a delicate balance between uh, a sweeter southern cornbread that is uh, a little bit more crumbly and a less sweet northern cornbread that's maybe a little bit more cake-like. So we are using a mixture of two different cornmeals in this. We're using uh, yellow cornmeal and Jimmy Red cornmeal that was actually grown at Ashbourne Farms where I work. And we have combined those with some all-purpose flour as well. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to add our salt to our mixture of cornmeal and AP. And then give that a little stir to begin combining those dry ingredients. The two dry ingredients that I haven't added yet are the baking soda and the baking powder. I'm going to wait until tomorrow to add those because for this particular cornbread, we're going to allow it to rest overnight in the fridge. That should help some of the flavors marry together, but that time soaking and hydrating should also make for a softer, more tender crumb when we're done. So I've got those dry ingredients mixed together now, and now we're going to combine all of our wet ingredients in another bowl. I've got four eggs here, and I'm going to add our buttermilk. And now I'm just going to begin stirring that together. We don't really need to worry too much about whisking the eggs. We just need to break them up. And I've got some melted butter over to the side here, but it's been cooling for a little while. We want to be careful that we don't add hot melted butter to cold eggs because that will curdle them. But by adding the buttermilk into the eggs first, we're reducing the chance of that curdle happening if we are adding it just a little bit warm. And then finally, we're going to add the honey. There's no uh, white sugar in this recipe, it's just honey. That added moisture from the honey is also going to help with that crumb, keeping it soft and moist. And now that we've got our wet ingredients combined, we are going to add those to the dry. I'm just gonna make a little well in the center here. Pour those wet in. And then the consistency of this when we're done should be uh, a relatively runny batter. Because the butter is melted, but uh, overnight in the fridge, that's going to solidify just a little bit. And so it will actually thicken up from the consistency that it is now. So if it looks and feels a little bit runny to you, don't worry, it won't look or feel that way in the morning. And we don't really want to stir it too much. We don't want to over mix it. We don't want to develop any of the gluten in the wheat flour at all. We just want to get everything fully hydrated without any lumps. And now we are just going to cover this overnight, pop it in the fridge, and then tomorrow we will make cornbread from it. Okay, we're back and we're going to finish off this skillet cornbread now. We've had the batter resting in the fridge overnight, 
to uh, hydrate and for those flavors to begin to marry together. We added our baking soda and our baking powder uh, about 10 minutes ago. I like to wait until just before baking so that we get maximum activity from that. I also take it out of the fridge about an hour or an hour and a half or so before I want to bake it so that the batter can begin to temper. With all that butter in it, it begins to get really, really thick and we want to be able to pour it out into the skillets. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some butter to these skillets so that we can begin preheating them and get them nice and sizzling. Another hack that you can do at home is you can use uh, bacon fat instead of the butter. It has a really high smoke point and um, adds a really nice flavor to the finished cornbread. For this butter, I'm using a, an 83% butterfat European butter, so a little bit uh, higher butterfat content and a little bit higher smoke point. So I'm gonna pop these into the oven for about 10 minutes just to preheat and get sizzling. And then we'll check back in about 10 minutes and get that batter into these skillets. Okay, we've got these cast irons preheated. And that butter is nice and browned which is just gonna add a little bit more flavor here. Let's get this batter in. We're gonna fill it about halfway because it's gonna rise quite a bit in the oven. and then back in. And we'll check on that in 15 minutes. It may take up to 25 minutes, so see you shortly. All right, we are going to check on these cornbreads. Uh, I've got a little skewer here. Uh, you can Use a toothpick or a skewer. And what we're looking for is for it to have pulled away from the edges and for a skewer inserted into the center to come out cleanly. We are good here. So. And we have got a few more minutes on the larger one, but this smaller one is ready to go. So we're just gonna let that cool for uh, about five or six minutes and then we will turn it out of the skillet onto a cooling rack and then enjoy. All right, the cornbread is now cooled and ready for turning out. So we're just gonna flip these out. I really like to enjoy this warmed again with some butter whipped with sorghum syrup. But right now, since we don't have any of that ready, I'm just gonna tear into it and try a bite as it is. Oh my God. <laughs> That's some down home goodness right there. Right there. <laughs> I can't. 